Hi there, it's Debbie Anderson here today from Inner Liberation Healing. And today I'm here to talk with you on your recovery from narcissistic abuse. And we're going to talk about financial abuse uh, by narcissists and the tricks and trickery that they use. Um, and it's really common among most of the narcissists. Um, and uh, I also suffered from this in my relationship. So many women have been abused financially in their relationships and uh, it's very common. Um, just before I get started, uh, if you can please subscribe to my channel to like or share and thumbs up my uh, video, I'd really appreciate it. So um, narcissists in regards to financial abuse, that the abuse can be subtle or it can be right up in your face or it can be a combination of both and um, financial abuse is really another way of diminishing you and controlling you. Um, money is an essential part of our independence and our security in many cultures. And if you don't have any money, <coughs> excuse me, and no access to money, it's hard to feel independent. Um, and you may be also feeling like you're trapped and stuck in a situation with no way out. Financial abuse is often one of the critical ways that abusers, uh, they, they attempt to keep you in the relationship because you don't have the finances or the ability to access the finances in order to get out. So if you don't have money, if you don't have access to money, and if you have children that rely on you financially, um, it's going to be really hard for you to leave a toxic relationship. The narcissist can withhold the money. That's one of the ways that they abuse you uh, financially. They can stop paying their share of the expenses, or if they have been supporting you, they can stop that or, you know, pay it one month, don't do it the next month, that kind of thing. And um, they can refuse to contribute to the finances in general, period. It can... <clears throat> it can be insisting that um, they can insist that they that someone else pays for them. Um, it can involve taking money out of your bank account without permission, um, claiming that that's not stealing it. Um, they can borrow money uh, without telling you, set up credit lines, set up um, get credit cards without your knowledge, uh, get loans without your knowledge, and create like financial mayhem and catastrophes, you know, all around you. It can involve guilting you, threatening you, manipulating you, harassing you, uh, bullying you, uh, throwing tantrums if you dare to bring up anything about uh, the finances in the house. Um, it can be any situation, really, that doesn't allow you to have access to joint accounts or your accounts. Um, and it's used to threaten you, to punish you, to hurt you. Um, and it's very, very common. They often believe, narcissists often believe, that they are superior and that they have... Uh, much more knowledge than others in regard to almost anything, including, you know, anything to do with money. And this is also part of the reason that they, you know, um, believe they're entitled to looking after all the finances and control the money because they are so much smarter and more clever than anyone else. <clears throat> My uh, narcissistic partner believed that he was an authority pretty much on everything, including money. Uh, they may be deliberately cruel about controlling it, um, taking pleasure in creating circumstances where they force you to ask for it or even to beg for money. Um, they often, uh, or they offer money um, to control you. So, you know, here you can have this and it makes them in charge of, of the finances, you know, because they are giving it to you. Um, an example of uh, what my narcissistic partner did um, in regard to finances was one time we had agreed to go away on a vacation 
which ended up, of course, with not he going on the vacation with uh, myself and the two kids and the dog, but he went away on a very expensive trip abroad um, because he felt that, you know, he never got anything um, and, you know, he had never been away for years or if ever. And uh, so he off he went and it cost $6,000. Uh, for three weeks while well, he went off and did whatever he wanted and I took the children to cottages around the area with the dog for <clears throat> three weeks. Um, so his six thousand dollars on this side and uh, three three of us and a dog for the same amount of time for about fifteen hundred dollars. So some narcissists are obvious and um, they'll insist that they're the ones that look after all the bills they're the ones that make sure that there's uh, the mortgage is paid and so on. And then you find out, um, you know, when the companies start calling you, the electric company and so on, the mortgage company saying that your payment isn't there, you're late and so on. And then you're left cleaning up the mess. Um, they may constantly talk about how much they do for others and how much everyone owes them, the narcissists. And... Um, Another example <clears throat> is uh, my ex-partner was going to a conference and he needed a new uh, outfit to wear to this conference. So, um, you know, we talked about it and he forgot to put the details in of what exactly he planned on buying. So he bought a $3,000 suit, um, very expensive shirts, I think they're about $300 each and $150 ties. So um, he felt that, you know, this was an important image that he had to <clears throat> show the public. And this, of course, uh, was overspending and caused our finances for that month to be completely a mess. So um, their entitlement is, uh, and his entitlement was really quite obvious in that example. and. They have absolutely no um, concept or they don't care, really, that um, there's concern or there's a big problem or they've created a big problem. Um, they, they, they don't care. It's not even in their thinking. Um, I, re you know, I just remember my partner saying, you know, he, he had to look good. And that was fair enough, but I certainly didn't expect, you know, $4,000 worth of clothes to uh, go to a conference. Um, when you approach them about what's going on and what the problem is, whatever that is, they insist that um, they get very little, that they're often neglected, that in fact we might be neglecting them and blaming them, um, and they, are man they manage to twist things around and and put the focus off themselves and what they've caused and the issue that they've caused. This is very common with narcissists, for sure. Um, if you question them about their uh, behavior in terms of finances and money, the fact that they've created such a financial burden is insignificant to them and irrelevant um, and is, of course, never addressed. They manage to create a big uh, argument and put the focus on something else or on you or, um, and it's really crazy making, that's for sure, and very common. So um, they, this is typical narcissistic behaviors and very common um, in terms of finances. They also believe, you know, that there's, uh, they have sort of magical thinking um, often when, uh, when it comes to some debts and money and where the money's going to come from. They uh, think that somehow this money is going to come from from wherever. There's never an answer about where that is, but uh, that's often used as a tactic as well. Um, and certainly, that's enough to make you go start raving mad yourself. Um, so, you know, this kind of behavior is very common. And um, they, they believe that, you know, what, what's mine is mine, what's yours is mine. That's uh, for sure. 
if uh, you're living with this um, kind of abuse, this financial abuse from a narcissist, I'm certainly not making light of it, but I've, I've been there. It's highly traumatic. It's demoralizing. You can, um, you know, you're abused and then you're gaslighted uh, and told that what you're experiencing is not abuse. And somehow you've got everything all mixed up in your mind. Um, <clears throat> oh, and the same time, they're blaming you for the money issues um, as though you've caused them all. When in fact, you're just trying to resolve the situation as an adult and they're not able to do that. So, um, I remember being uh, in line in a grocery store, you know, uh, with a baby and getting to the end of the line, putting the debit card in and there was no money in the account to pay for it. And, um, you know, I, this would happen a lot. <laughs> so, uh, also he would, um, he would make light of my position, which was a very responsible position. And, <clears throat> you know, I actually made more money than he did. However, my job was not as important as his and um, eventually he lost his position uh, and that was because uh, the, the boss found out exactly who he was. So you kind of get the drift of what I'm telling you in terms of, you know, what financial abuse is by narcissists and, um, you know, what you, are, you could be experiencing. And, you know, even after you leave the situation, you're still, you know, end up being responsible for their debts. Um, and you know, try to dig yourself out of a, the situation. You can develop uh, fears around, you know, uh, even thinking about money and feeling very, very anxious um, because of the financial abuse that you've suffered. You know, you can get a trigger, like a, even if a bill comes, that could be a trigger that causes so much panic and anxiety, even though you might have, you know, you're out of the situation and you've been able to pay uh, the bills all the way along, it's still, you know, these, this trauma is left in your, in your body um, until it's, it's healed. So your basic sense of stability and security is often completely messed up um, to the point where you're, you know, you're on edge and you know, it takes deep healing to actually get out of the situation and, and get away from these, these feelings. So um, financial abuse uh, can be devastating, as I mentioned, um, and cause so much trauma within your body. So part of the thing is, is uh, in order to heal from it, it takes a different kind of healing. It takes a healing uh, in your body and not in your mind. And certainly I've helped, uh, I, I healed myself and I can can show you the way um, if you're ready to do that. Also, um, if you consider um, that you need to be sovereign in your life, and by that I mean not dependent on your narcissistic partner or your ex-narcissistic partner or anyone for that matter, so that you can rely on your own self for your finances and everything else. But today we're speaking about financial abuse. So uh, I'm going to leave a link below the video in regard to how you can become financially sovereign and sovereign period, um, you know, using your own abilities and talents that you have to become monetized so that you can be free and not dependent on anyone except yourself to uh, live your life. So um, I hope you found this helpful. If you uh, would like to get my free guide, the link for that is below. I've also written an ebook called Recover from Narcissistic Abuse. And um, it, it, if I had this information when I was leaving my ex, it would have been helpful. So I hope that you find this video helpful, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.